Recently, something I've been working very hard on on FC25 is trying to find my way out of the press with dribbling. I find left-stick dribbling to be somewhat quite difficult on FC25. And I'm sure many of you feel the same. And I was sitting there, I was analysing, I was trying to break things down and going, how can I find my way out of the press? How can I create chances? How can I build up in the attack by left-stick dribbling? Now, I think there's many factors that play a part into it, but I kind of found one thing that really, really helped me, and that is going to be agile dribbling. And this is where you hold L2 and R2 on PlayStation, LT and RT on Xbox. And this is the times where you feel I can't play the pass into where i want to go because the opponent you know is kind of there and in the way and then i'm gonna you know look to try and play out of it so in this position here you can see i picked the ball up with dembele i originally wanted to look to see if i could go in towards griezmann into this position but i know he's gonna he's gonna cover that right now i could go for a simple pass back into the right back and then kind of invite a little bit more pressure or i can try and play you know a little bit more expressive and look to beat this man with agile dribbling so you can see i'm holding r2 and l2 agile dribbling on fifa 23 used to be r1 dribbling and then fc24 they introduced controlled sprint which was r1 so then agile dribbling moved to l2 and r2 we didn't really feel a need to do it last year on fc24 in all honesty because left stick dribbling was pretty good as a whole but this year, it, it just isn't. It just really, really isn't. You know, left-stick dribbling is really, really tough to get out. And this is kind of the way that I've been dealing with it. So you can just see how I use that there just to break away and beat past that man. We have plenty more examples here for us just to show you where we're using it and how we're using it and so on. It just gets us those little shimmies, those little turns. I wouldn't say it's realistic, quote-unquote um but either way it gives us those opportunities to just kind of work it through you can see we use it plenty of times there with Griezmann with Dembele and then picking it out here loving it into Dembele again looking to take on the opponent using a bit of controlled sprint now you can use it in and around the 18 yard box as well Griezmann with that finesse and this is something I will touch on you about like so I think this here as a whole is a pretty good example of taking our time thinking about where the press is coming in looking to commit an extra man with a right back as you can see here with a rente we put the ball up we're just looking to chill we're looking to wait we're sending runners as and where we can little r to l2 there it's quick it's snappy we're basically using it as a way to you know we're, we're pointing say upwards here and then we want to come back and go down there so then we're going to hold r2 l2 and then we let go of it and then we can just go back to kind of left driven so it's kind of like on and off on and off on and off you know we're not holding it down and then just holding the left stick forward all the time that isn't what we're looking to do it is that kind of on and off to get us into there and this is a good example of just where we take our time we look to kind of wait for those runners and then something that i think is super effective i talk about um I, took, I spoke about this last year actually a little bit more and it's kind of player identities and i think it plays more in this year to kind of player roles as well and what it is is identifying in your team what is everyone's job how are they going to defend how are they going to build up how are they going to attack our game plan when i get the ball with harland is very different than when i get the ball with griezmann griezmann is unbelievable at operating in these sort of areas where we literally have two to three yards on his own to get one touch out and then to look immediately for that finesse into that far corner we can time these with green time finishing if you have the ability to do so if not so much you can just look for a normal green uh, normal r1 finesse that's absolutely fine as well they are so so strong and so effective so again just moving on to some more examples here we can see how the opponent's looking to press there with Saliba I use that r2 l2 dribbling we'll just show you one more time I'm drawing in the press I'm thinking where do I want to go I initially want to turn up here so you can see I left stick up now I'm thinking I want to pass to here and then go into there but this is going to get really really dangerous for me this is going to allow him to second man press with this man switch into this man Cole Palmer move on to that and then bang I'm pressed so I see this and I react to this and I go no and then I just go for that quick L2 R2 literally if, if you, you're not looking at the controller you'll miss it and I just get that little tight turn I'll just show you again one more time as we get the ball into Saliba upwards and then there R2 L2 I'm now moving the stick back down into here making him to commit to that I've took the player out of the game and now I can go Something that I think a lot of players do wrong on FC25, and this is something I've been, again, working on myself, is you don't want to release the ball too early. You ideally want to kind of suck someone in, so Griezmann here in this instance, 
and then look to release the ball. Because right now, you can see Mendy's got no one on him. Ledley King's got no one on him. Llorente's got no one on him. So, I mean, they're kind of here, you know, in a, in a space. But what it means is that if I just release the ball straight away with Saliba and I have a back four that is essentially not drawing in any pressure, it then means that my midfielders are going to be marked and have no space. So now I have room to operate in. Mendy can lay that. I can then play out to there. Because I played it to Mendy, Salah comes off Thorum, and now I can look to play out and kind of go from there. We'll look for another example here for us. Pick the ball up with Rashford, look to drive, use a bit of controlled sprint there, trigger my runners, play that through ball. Griezmann, L2R2, and this is the good old shimmy shimmy yard that I talk about. A good little ball in and an unbelievable volley as well. But shimmy shimmy yar, shimmy yar. What do I mean by this? I, I like a lot of my sayings, right? The shimmy shimmy yar, shimmy yar is where you'll be running on one path. You go that way you then fake like you you go up there with one little touch and then you go back that original way that you're going it's a very quick and easy way to get the opponent to react to what's going because you've got to remember you're planning this in your brain right the opponent is reacting to what he sees on screen and when they see this on screen you're then going to get that half a second to burst away. Defensive recovery rate is pretty strong on FT25, so you have to find a way to at least get them to commit to an animation ever so slightly. This is what I would say is kind of overloading the opponent's mental stack. The more things that you can give them to think about when you're attacking is going to help you create opportunities and just get more chances they've got to be aware of so many different scenarios that you may look for because you're overloading that and you're giving them more things to think about so you can see that quick l2 r2 agile dribbling to turn up and then i'm going to now turn back down into here warm and then i'm going to hold il1 and i'm going to look to try and speed boost out of it as well which we thankfully managed to get and then a little ball roll on the inside a cross in and obviously Haaland doing what kind of Haaland does best with an unbelievable finish. So if we take a look at this, I use a triangle pattern here, but this is kind of going counterintuitive to what I just spoke about with drawing a man in. I here in this position, so many times I've been trying to take a touch and left stick dribble past Udogi and it just doesn't work. So when I was analyzing these over plenty, plenty games and I was going, what can I do here? I was like, okay, I've got to go back and use the fullback. I've got to treat this as real life football just play to the player that is free you know i think in previous years well when i when i first started learning the game on fifa 18 i would do this and then i kind of got lazy over recent years and gone nah i can just dribble past him i back my ability that isn't the case for me at the minute i can't do that so going back into lorente now i send dembele on a run to give us that option and then i'm going to look to kind of use this triangle here that we can build up from that but i don't draw Udogi in. I think letting Dembele run and holding on to this ever so slightly with Lorente would be better to hopefully try and get him to commit with Udogi. If he carries on running up here, that's going to give me more space in behind. So that's where I kind of said about I've released the ball too early. You can see Lorente's not got anyone pressuring him. That then puts Thoram under that little bit of pressure. He then tracks the running behind and then I get to come into this position. Again, just take a look at that dribbling with Griezmann. I'll show you one more time. The ball comes out to the right wing. We shimmy shimmy R one way and we come back the same way. R2, L2, whoop, see ya. Nice little bit of dribbling. I don't get to beat the man there, but that's okay. I can come back and I can recycle. Dembele gets that one up. Good little uh, trick to fake shot, which is really strong. Should have probably just carried on driving there and get that shot off, panicked a little bit and did a good old trusty fake shot, which are really not that good. Please don't do fake shot stops. They are not the one that we want it to be. Haaland. Something to, to take note of in this position. I don't like what I do here. I really, really don't. Now, I do use R2L2 dribbling, Agile dribbling with Haaland there just to beat that press. I should just be looking to lay the ball backwards here with Haaland. Again, talking about player roles, player identities. Who do we have on the ball? Haaland is not a dribbler. Once I've evaded that press ever so slightly, let's look to release the ball on move it on to the next play, and then Haaland can look to get involved somewhere else. This isn't the type of player that I want dancing around on the center circle doing all this. Like, I hold on to this way too long. I'm waiting to see if Griezmann's going to give me an option, right? But as soon as I have my back to the opponent's defense, Haaland, just give the ball off, let him go and do his thing, let him go on a running behind, and let's play into that sort of space. Yes, it's an example of agile dribbling and how I keep the ball with him. If I just left it dribble there, I lose the ball, just straight up. Like, you have to use that R2L2 in that sort of position. But 
play to that strength of the player. Haaland doesn't want to be dribbling on the centre circle. That's not what his speciality is. That's not how I'm going to create chances. And I need to do that. So this has definitely helped me. You know, we went 13-1 and this weekend in Weekend League. And I kind of sat down and said to myself in the build-up to it, this is an area that I'm struggling in. How can I ensure that I don't keep turning the ball over, particularly really in this sort of area? This is where I turn the ball over so much, maybe even a little bit deeper. There up to the halfway. Anywhere in here is where I was really turning that ball over because I was trying to play it into my centre mids, left it dribble out and just not having that success of it, even there with Griezmann in that sort of position. And that's when I was like, okay, well, what can we do? Previous years, I'd do that uh, as I was dribbling on FIFA 23. Didn't need to do it last year on FC 24. Maybe it's time for us to look to do it on FC25. And it's just helped me massively, hence the reason why I'm sharing it with you all as well today. So do let me know how you find it in the comment section. Um, if you think it's good, if you think it's helped you, if you used it inside the 18-yard box as well, because you can use it, obviously, to try and beat a man in those sort of areas where possible. And uh, yeah, let me know down below in the comment section. If you did enjoy the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. As always, thank you all very much for watching. I hope we've helped you learn something new today, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.